Good morning. Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Uh, we have a very perfect live show. I have a lot of research, data, some opinion pieces from medical providers. I'm really, 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 really excited by today's show. First of all, my printer is back. We are printing off stuff, and I've got a lot of data to share with you. Um, we are going to cover some big, big news in the world of immunity uh, regarding COVID, how the body's immune response, how we can actually naturally encourage that. That's the main topic of today's live show. So we'll cover the news. So if you are new and joining, welcome. I want to welcome you to our community. So I'm going to encourage you to hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Hit the bell, get all notifications so that you can get the little thing or text reminder or email reminder that I go live every day. And on Instagram, I hope you'll follow me. So before we kick off, I always love to hear and see who all is on the live as well as on the replay. So in the comment box below on the live chat and over on Instagram, comment and let me know where you're tuning in from. City and state, country, uh, origin, wherever you are located. We actually had somebody on from... Um, Ghana, I think yesterday, that was exciting. So I wanna welcome all of you. Um, we, we have a lot of information to dig into. So let's just plow through it. So first let's kick off the fact, I've got some stats here. We are seeing uh, a massive quantity of growth in a lot of different areas that we don't wanna see. So being a leader in, in the COVID category is not where we want to be. But the U.S., there's two big um, elements. U.S. is on the increase in hospitalization rate. So the printer didn't cut off fully, but this is the beginning of it. So just know that this little line here is in March, it's a lot lower. This is up to, this is a 60,000 mark. Um, we have a significant increase just in the matter of a um, few, few weeks after Memorial Day up through the middle of July increases in hospitalizations. This is what most uh, is important because hospitalizations are the severe COVID cases. They are the folks that are admitted because they've got multiple complications, the immune system, inflammatory cytokine storms heightened, and they're requiring a lot of care. So this is really critical where we're looking at the volume of impact on the healthcare system. So that data is really critical. There is, I, I, I've made the prediction, friends, CDC is going to come out swinging with a lot of data. And of course, uh, it's proving to be right. They posted, um, it actually was picked up by the journal um, of um, the JAMA, the Journal of American Medical Association. They um, post, they published a CDC related report that looked at the seroprevalence of antibodies um, to SARS-CoV-2 in 10 sites in the US. So th what, what that means, the basic um, non-medical language is that they assessed um, 10 locations in the US, they did antibody tests and they wanted to see what the prevalence of folks showcasing antibodies and then also digging down into how many of them were tested and were not. The, the mode importance of this test was to identify um, an estimate of infection COVID. Um, and what they, they found was that, that the cases of antibodies were a lot higher, higher than they had predicted. And then in some cases, the changes between six times to 24 times, times higher um, certain areas. This area was actually, was actually Missouri. Missouri was, 20, was 24 times higher, um, meaning that, that more people had, had antibodies uh, showcase the case that they had had exposure, their body had um, been, uh, uh, had contracted, contracted COVID, then th those even had, had tests taken. So, so that ultimately averages 10, 10 times. Uh, so, so what that does is it identifies our COVID, COVID numbers the under-reporting of our COVID positive cases varies between six times and 24 times, but on average, you're going to hear 10 times being the average of, of individuals that we missed, um, that were maybe asymptomatic or had, uh, you know, COVID didn't get test tested and were spreaders. So this is really, really critical. Um, they actually identified that New York, um, in the height of COVID, uh, New York actually 
uh, let's see, it is, is 32% of the population should show, showcase antibodies. It means 32% of the population had been exposed to COVID. That should very well explain why New York was such a massive explosion. I do want to say that this was a, a sampling, blood serum sampling between March 23rd and May 12th. I'm hoping we are have another one of these done right now because this, if we look at like when this occurred, March 23rd to May 12th, that's in here. That, that's kind of core hospitalization rate. I want, I want to see the, the next degree because we might be even seeing a higher percentage in definitely isolated Florida, Florida to California, Arizona. Okay, okay, so this really... Big, 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 big. This came from this in the CDC. Front. This is how they're utilizing the data, data reported to them, them to help us identify and research search and have better snapshot of potential contagion in our areas for those folks that, that were not tested. I do want to highlight that um, our test crisis continues to exist. Um, that, that does not change. There are... Um, a, a lot of things are happening um, in different state dates, but we continue to see, see slow return tests, positive tests, and then, and then also um, a lack of, of tank supplies, testing centers, and testing, testing locations. Um, so let's just dig right, right on in the world. I just, I just want to highlight we're almost at 15 million cases. We'll, we'll hit, hit that um, in, in today's uh, full reporting. The world's at 15. 0.9511 uh, cases of COVID. Brazil is at 2.6 million. India is at 1.195. Russia is at 789,000. And South Africa has moved up to 381,000 cases. Uh, here in, in the U.S., the core at Epner, the worst case of COVID right now, this week is. And I'm a lot of news on, on Florida. So let me know. Let me know. Let me see. It looks like, like I've got some Florida folks on. Let me know where you're tuning in, in from in Florida. Because we, I'm going to highlight some even more, more interesting news for our Floridian uh, folks. I have a lot of friends and family in my back. So COVID in Florida, the rates, and, and this is also not including the unreported rates. So we know Florida has two values. They're underreporting anyway. The way they're not new science, new data. Something we've known since May. May. Basically, what we've seen is that the percentage of new cases that are positive. This is percent positive of your cases tells you how much contagion are you dealing with, like how overwhelmingly uh, uh, prevalent it is and how quickly is it spreading. And what they're seeing is an increase in, in percentage. So this, this is the five. This is increments of five. Um, um, yeah, 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 20, 25%. There are, there are some days, there was one day where they were at like 20, on, on average, um, 20, 23. There were, there were some cases where they were in the 30s. Th um, but we, we have identified that on average, last, really since just July, uh, uh, they're averaging in the high, high teens, double digits, and in the 20s right here. So one out of five, five Floridians, has had exposure. exposure. Now, if we take into account this, this new EDC report, report, just speculate this, this in, into the floor scene, we might be dealing with, knowing, knowing uh, New York was as an epicenter, we might be dealing, dealing with a whole bunch more folks that have COVID. Um, and that, that is a very scientific kind of hypothesis. I know we're going to have conclusive of data that's being, being worked on now. Articulate, articulate, but that is um, something we need to be, be aware of. Um, as far as epicenter, um, you know, the U.S. continues to be the core or epicenter. And so I don't want, don't want to deflect on some of you smaller uh, case numbers to minim minimize your caseload or the outbreak. But just globally or at domestically, the U.S. is uh, the epi epicenter. And within our epicenter, we have certain locations that are really expl explosive. The most pressing number to you, I want, want to really hone, hone in on this month. Not only the uh, a positive percent K, K, um, the per, you know, positive percent pos positives of the tests that are, that are coming. Also, our fatality rate. Um, yesterday was a day we had over a thousand deaths. One day. 
Um, and if, if we articulate how many total totals we've had, had, it equals up to two and a half Vietnam, Vietnam wars. Um, so if we double double on the fertility rate, that is what we're what we're dealing with. Very long war increases. We've had had several states have had high death, the high the highest death of Florida. For instance, they had a, a high 132 individuals. Georgia we had 78. Um, let's see, Pennsylvania, North Carolina also had uh, uh, records, and Texas um, did have a uh, red a uh, high. Um, um, High fatality rate—they've actually increased by 3 percent in Texas this, this this month. So there are a total of 20 states that have have rising hospitalizations. So so these are super COVID cases. They're having cases and and the percent positive tests that are coming back, and they're having increase in fatalities. So those those three factors are indicative of 20 states. That is an, an indication that we have no go control with the spread of this virus. And so it, it becomes really critical. We, we take measures to um, minimize our exposure and, and we precaution since all of the individual's family, your workspace, your social sphere, healthy and well. Okay. So, um, oh, YouTube has an echo again. I don't know what is going on with that. Sorry, you guys, to sound not good. Hmm. Okay. I don't. I don't know. I, I've even checked uh, um, all of my. I, I checked audio, so I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Let me just make sure. It's all fully. Uh, all, all my connections. I have a ton of connections. They're all like right here. Let me guys see. I've got everything all kind of linked in. And so, um, but we'll just keep going. Instagram is. Always your thing. So if you want to join a join on Instagram, the live show is up there. It's done for because it's such a good, I have such power packed act to share. Okay, okay. So um let me just run down some some uh, states um in terms of the, the death. Um we have uh California four hundred thousand thousand cases. Florida is at three hundred and sixteen thousand. They and they a big day. They had they had uh, just under ten thousand. So they have they have um, 9,194 positive cases. There were four or four, five counties currently in the state of Florida that have, have no ICU capacity. Five counties. And they are big, big counties. Um, Miami Day Day being one of Miami Day Day now is at 130% ICU capacity. Um, and then we also have um, on Friday, Friday, so tomorrow, my date is going to get five new. Uh, testing lo location that they can run more tests on people. People they were having people waiting waiting line for and then having them turn pe people away. It's insane. Okay, okay. okay. So yes, yeah, um, Alwood Jen says that there was no up until about a minute, minute or two ago. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it is. I think it's an, a YouTube issue, and, and that's going to feel that because everybody complains. Lane's like I'm aware of it. <laughs> I, I can't do anything about it. Um, okay, so <clears throat> other stuff. North North Carolina surpassed Pennsylvania um, um, in cases. They are now at, at 102,000 cases equal. Um, for uh, Texas, I want to talk talk about, about Texas. We talked a little bit um, yesterday about, about the Rio Grande area. They only have that whole area, the border border area, has only th 37 ICU beds available. Um, they've seen a very significant increase, a double digit increase in the fatality rates to this. Uh, Alice and Houston are starting to decrease in, in the positive cases. Now, they're still hot. It is may, maybe they've hit a plateau. We're not sure. But Hildago, uh, uh, Hildago County, County, yeah, Hidalgo County. They, they are the epicenter center of Texas. So they're the county that ha has the most cases in the state of Ta Texas. Here in Georgia, um, Savannah is, is announced yesterday, yesterday getting help from Gov Governor Cuomo. But they also are um, charted bid to be a part of one of the phase three of the clinical, clinical trials. And they actually are um, looking for volunteers. So if you or any family live in Savannah and want to be a part of the trial, trial um, there's information, just click Savannah COVID trial, trial. And there's a, a company that is going to be um, taking, taking in 
candidates. The uh, North North Jordan here, there's, um, and we have the Blue Ridge, Blue Ridge Mountains, the beginning of, of the mountains, Appalachian Mountains. There's a, there's a North Georgia medical, medical mobile unit that, that's set up for works. And so that is a challenge. <laughs> when we think about a lot of people from, from Atlanta go mountains and, and, uh, and North Carolina. So, so there's a possibility that there's some spread, spread happening that as summer is happening, happening. Um, some news uh, on, this is very sad front. There, um, there was a situation in Michigan where the Felician Sisters North America, it's a, it's a convent of, of cat nuns. 30 nuns have died of COVID and that's 22% of their population. Of It's a, basically a kind of a retirement center, 66 to 99 year old nuns who are teachers, administrators, and volunteers, or not volunteers, but, but in the medical space. Um, and, and the worst loss of religious women's life, uh, um, any type of convent situation since the pandemic of 1918. So just want to put that out there. Um, Florida, let's talk about Florida. So I talked a little bit about, about the epicenter, and we're seeing an extensive both in the positive percentages. So one out of five uh, folks that's getting COVID tested, it's, it's coming positive. The, um, what they're seeing, seeing it is the, the major hotspot, the number one worst case, case D with COVID raging in, is my Miami-Dade area. Um, um, they're averaging 4,000 positive cases a day versus 76,000 um, cases said it's the thing of, of the month. Uh, Tampa Bay is the, the eighth uh, worst city to be in. Uh, they have posted 1,200 case cases a day. Tampa Bay is where I grew up. That's where I started my business. This is where our house moved from them there to Georgia. Um, um, the eighth highest, they hosted 21,000 positive cases this the month. And Orlando, Orlando is next at number nine. Um, and these are, you know, the, this I've got to get a new one of these, but the, the, this is where, where we were at two weeks ago. Florida it is moved into the, the number one spot, and within that, now I am used the worst. Um, so that is where we're at, kind of, kind of with the states, and, and we're seeing um, you know, calls that we're going to have to have a use COVID strategy. The fact that we are in now, what, on five of this, this six. Uh, and we have any strategy, it's it's high time to get, get some strategy going, going because we are in this dip a little bit, it's going to go up again and then rise again. And that rise, rise will be in the beginning of the fall around Thanksgiving time if we don't get a handle on this. Um, the U.S. hospitalization and it indicated this. Um, the 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 average the worst day was fifty nine thousand five hundred thirty thirty eight Americans were hospitalized. Uh, yesterday, yesterday we are are the I think the latest day is the nineteenth. Um, that number is fifty eight thousand three hundred thirty, and so, and so we, we are quickly approaching more than we were before, and and haven't learned a whole, a whole lot. <laughs> So, so I want to dig in, dig in to what what is something we can rely rely on, and it is science, science data, research, um, and, and the and the investigative scientific research to figure out more about this this novel virus, understand what's working within our body. And today's topic, we're going to talk about the immune immune system, uh, particularly a, a certain cell or group of cell cells that um, we can invigorate. Because we're seeing that some of the vaccines are actually en enhancing one degree of immunity. So there's been a lot of, lot of conversation on antibodies, um, but, we, but we are seeing that the ant antibody uh, capacity to protect us really kind of fizzle out by month two, month three. But what is showcasing to be a stronger, more, more powerful, more potent form of immunity might very, very well be the T cells. And we're going to talk a little lot about that. But, but I want to highlight some additional resources. Stay with me. I, I know it's an echo. Um, and if you're concerned about the echo, come, come join on Instagram, Instagram because that's live and we're all good there. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm even out of the gate. Like, I'm so glad I printed our paper. <laughs> back on. Because there, there's a big data. 
So University of Nebraska, they had the first, first big study study that talked about the transmission of COVID. They were, they were testing patients' rooms, they were isolating, they were identifying just how, how overwhelmingly uh, missable this virus is. They were finding particulates you know, on the ceiling, and, and so it really highly highlighted about transmissibility. They're back on, on thought this, this new journal that um, um, has come literally, I think it came out yesterday. Um, it, 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 I will say, we have this not peer reviewed. It, it has not been, not been certified peer reviewed. But they posted it just just out there. Basically, this talk about the transmissibility of the virus virus is also so um, can occur, can can also occur through normal normal walking and breathing. And that and that when we speak speak normally, not yelling or singing, when we're, we're speaking and breathing, the tra- the, tra- the virus can travel more than six feet. And what they did is they collect, collected my droplets. Um, and they did this this sort of device where, where it looked like a phone and they were able to hold the drop droplets and identify that when, when they called them, um, three out of eight, 18 samples that they were able to replicate, meaning, meaning there's active viral particles. Um, and this is, this, this, these are two slides chasing the, the part, or actually this, this is one slide, that this is what this little part of the looks. But what they, they've done is they showcase the, the polls that um, were grown and how how the replication process happened. And, and so these these are, are micron, really micron sub micron filters. Um, and that's how they they coded them. And they basically look at the likelihood um, of continued circulation on a virus. And you know what, what does that time frame frame look like in terms of us being able to get control of this? And, and so they went to sam- the patient sample rooms, um, and this is kind of a, a readout of room, room, you know, 7, 8, 7, B, so 7, 4, A through D. Um, and they look at the the different types of, of particulates, um, and, and then the cold, cold of them. So what, what the takeaway here, here is that, uh, you know, there are five room rooms, Samples of bedridden patients. Um, and they use this little collection, and uh, you know, one, one micron particle. They um, active the viral particles, and those can can be easily transmitted in our eyes, our nose, our mouth, because these these are in there. They are they are circulating in the air. Um, they also could be could be circulated in our air cycle. Um, so it it's it's one of those where it, this is, is very telling, and this is one of the reasons why door spaces, including church, churches. I know a lot of messages. You guys are doing doing really great. Like there's Saturday, Saturday, and Sunday you're going to church. Do virtual school churches. Do virtual school services. It is not worth you breathing in one micron. On, I mean, one micron. We can't we can't even see with the naked eye. That is very significant. Breathe in and twenty of those, and you have a COVID infection. So that, that is one big article. The next article that I want to highlight, um, actually, let's see, the one, one article I want to highlight, please, let's see where, where is it? Oh, oh here. Um, there's, a, there's a research letter um, out of, this again is Jam. Jam. Um, well, Jam was really, you know, the Jam felt public thing came out. So they've, they've got a lot of great stuff on, on this. It came out on the 20th. So, they um, look at uh, thrombosis in hospitalized patients with COVID in the New York City health system. So all, all New York City, city the boroughs as well. well they identify uh, patients between March 1st and, and April 17th. And it's about just over 3,300 patients. And 16% of them, them who are hospitalized have some degree of blood clotting, um, um, some systemic clot. Either it is R2, R2 um, in my present is DVT, vein thrombosis, PSP, which is pulmonary embolism, heart, heart attack, some version of a stroke. And what they've identified is that 62% of, of these clots are venous. They're in the veins. That's in the vascular channel. they up in the brain that can cause a stroke. They can be, can be um, in, in the vessels of our lungs, lungs be in our legs, our arms. 11% are arterial. So those 11% would cause the heart attack. 
Um, and this is really, really critical too, because they, they dig into to, um, that myocardial infraction. I talked a little bit about that, that last week. Um, the, the, the blood clotting, clotting triggers some of them this. So they, they break it down um, the, the ages. So the, the most, most impacted age, age group are those really the, the highest going to be over, over 75, but there's a chunk, chunk between 55 and 74 that that's a big collection. And then, then a really big component I really want to highlight is, is that um, B, BMI, and we talked a little bit about the BMI last, the, the body mass index, the most impactful um, group, group are those group, groups that are between BMI, BMI of 6 and 30. So that's in, in that kind of um, um, early mild obesity. And then the next most prevalent group was 31 to 40. But that, the study, study I highlighted last week really, really dug, dug into that 30 to 40. 40. But this is really cool. 26 to 30 on the BMI scale actually had a greater prevalence out of any, any of the um, BMIs to be um, more, more prone to that. So I, I think that's really critical. Um, the other, other thing that is um, um, interesting about this is that, that in the minority, the ethnicity of folks that have the blood clots, um, there's a balance between uh, non-Hispanic, African-American, and, and other multi-racial. And, and the greatest presence are non-Hispanic. So that's very, that's very interesting on that scale. Um, the, the biggest comorbidity, the biggest underlying health condition for such a class are going to be um, hypertension and um, high, high cholesterol and diabetes. These are, so those are three, diabetes, um, high cholesterol and diabetes and, and hypertension. So, so the, your, your blood pressure. So that's, that's really big news out of, of, um, out of, out of New York. Another bit of new news highlights uh, uh, type 1 diabetes and children. And dig into ketoacidosis, which is a situation where uh, um, type 1 diabetes is directly impacts their pH level. And there's a big kidney impact there. Um, the group, groups, the children who are most, we see this most pre prevalent are the age ranges of 6 to 11. Um, the greatest severity of diabetic acidosis actually occurs um, in the age group of, of actually under under between six, six and eleven, um, and it's it's more severe in folks under the age of six. So, I, I've maybe, you, you know one of the things that I've gotten a lot of questions on are. Type one adult diabetes, the type one children um, diabetes going to factor into children who are, are trying to try to figure out what to do with school. You know, there's potentially a risk for those those children um, if they were to get exposed. And given the fact that we've got got data on just the microns of particulate that we're talking and breathing um, is going to be critical. And again, again, that age range ten and under. There's less likelihood of the transmission, but still there. Um, so this really, really analyzed 532 children between March 13th and May 13th, um, and the average median age age was nine for nine years. Okay, so that's one little little tip tip of news. Um, other element of news that, that I think is very interesting is. Uh, um, uh, the journal calling you know, the medical medical college of India post posted a journal talking about, about medication medication that they're using when COVID patients are coming in minimize the blood the blood and they're seeing the same same effect and there's uh, this this one medication I think I'm gonna I'm gonna I hope probably gonna box with it but it's connective place that is a lower anti coagulant blood clotting reducer um, and then additionally in the studies. Talked a lot about. Oh, you know what? Here, is that better, you guys? <laughs> my, my apologies. I think it fell. Um, is the echo okay? You no, know, you guys on on you. So one of the things that um, is critical with the the Dane uh, 
or any of the blood clotting, deep vein, vein thrombosis, the vet, you know, you know, venous or arterial blood clot, clot. If we can can minimize that, we're going to minim minimize the, the long term dam damage. Okay, okay, yeah, sounds better. Okay, good, good, good. So apparently it was under control. <laughs> I'm like on my um, okay, so two big little things um, that came out the JAMA network, um, there, there's a there's a, a perspective study. Um, that they've done, done analyzing even the fact that COVID in many cases is involving family separated loved ones who aren't able to, able to communicate directly with doctors. It's brought up the discussion and highlighting the need to complete advanced medical directives um, and documenting care presences during the pandemic. And the fact that, that a lot of individuals are going in being hospitalized, they need to go on ventilation and quickly deteriorating. Thing. There's no medical documentation regarding what do they and families want in terms of how to care for them. Do, do we want R? Do we want, you know, hospice? It's just, just um, um, you know, unfortunately, morning is considered a care pra practice that, you know, it just, you know, just kind of drives them so they don't feel the pain of their organs shut down. Shut down. This really, really, really is interesting. Uh, uh, they they highlight that there are are more people actually going to the website where they, where they get these advanced jobs written written. But it's not what they're what they're seeing it still in, in the hospital settings that there there's there's a need for of this. And this is what we call advanced advanced planning. It's a topic a lot of families just don't like to talk about. Um, it is something thing that needs to be addressed. And so you can go, go to the website site, ourcarewishes.org. So I'll, I'll post this, this after the fact in, in, the, in the description. But it's a free tool to guide patients and some families through the advanced, advanced care mode. Um, I've also seen lawyers and family planning, care planning, especially, especially in Florida, because that's a big, big part. You know, no elder care, we have a lot of retirees. Um, there are a lot of lawyers offer offering service complimentary or have set up resources so so you know they're out there but if you didn't have them so especially like you think of family there's stuff that we we brian need to do as well but you know this i thought was very interesting this topic we don't talk about a lot but we, we need to so make sure if you're caring for um L family members or you're an executive um or um you know um uh, uh a point of care, um, um, Lily, for your loved one, and make sure you've got all that documentation and have that, have that on, on hand it with um, the the individual, um, so that if they're to need to get access to that, they have access. And actually, some of the things now you can put those on on hard drives, and so you can literally, literally get hard drive keychain, or have, or have it, you know, something that they could easily grab. Um, so just a little F, little F, F that. The other thing I want to highlight, this may or may not, may not come out, I'm sure, but but there is an editorial piece by two doc doctors um, um, who highlight a, a little bit of the, the data they're learning about the pediatric inflammatory um, syn syndrome or reference. Um, these are doctors, uh, pediatricians out of, of Seattle Children's Research Institute. And Department of Pediatrics, as well as uh, some Italian or oriented medical. medical um, you want to suck on? on? Oh, you want everybody? Here, come say hi. Where are you? Here, sit up. Sit up. Hey. Gabriel's come in. You can't really, can't really. Come here. Say hi. Hi, everybody. Oh, what's on your face? <laughs> you want to say hi? Hi. Water's on my face. Water's on your face? Uh -huh. It's like you've got some of your protein bar on your, on your face. What you doing? Is getting a suck on. You're getting a suck on. Mm -hmm. Loving. All right, right. You want to say bye to everybody? I sucked up my faces. <laughs> Can you say say bye, beautiful people, people? Bye. Suck up my oh, faces. say goodbye, beautiful people. <laughs> bye, beautiful. beautiful faces. Suck up my faces. <laughs> oh my gosh. All, All right, honey. Thank you. The door, please. All right, you got five beautiful self suck faces. <laughs> okay, so a little visit if I get Gabriel. He's so cute. He, he um, himself, long sleeves, 
long pants and he has a Superman pant or spider pants on and they have, have like a little blue. They're really long for him. And so he's got them half on his feet. And he's like, these are my super feet. Um, so anyway, that's the working while I'm working from, from home a little bit. Okay. Um, so <laughs> on cue, we're talking about, talking about children's health, but it's these physicians, um, Talk about, okay, okay here's all the evidence that we have about th this inflammatory disease. This is what we know, at least from the Kawasaki toxic shock syndrome. And what they've done is they pull, pulled the data, data, talked a little bit about um, information out of the European Center for Disease Control. I mean, it's really the European PNCDC, as well as uh, uh, European Union and U European and Economic Area. And they, and they talk a little bit about the li likelihood or the lack of likelihood for children to develop this, the more intense severe version of COVID. But they, what they, they put together, and I've, and I've highlighted, I just love that it's in this, in this little um, editorial. They highlight that, that um, you know, one of the things that the emergency rooms are showing is is not necessarily a, a direct viral insult, and so put it in that way. Um, but, but might be seeing the impact of COVID in in these these little bodies. Um, it might might be an adaptive immunity, and so it's an immune response. So we've already kind of articulated, but what they say is it's not just the infection; it's an sector effect. Um, and that might be a point where we might be able to see some therapeutics. We might, might be able to see, okay, okay, kids are getting diagnosed. We, we might be able to run some labs and be able to determine. Um, but but I, I, thought, I thought that was interesting. What they talk a little bit about, you know, you know likelihood prevalence, it's one out of 100 children, 20 out of, out of 100, or sorry, one out of 100,000 children, 20 out of 100,000. Um, and, and, you know, the, the, the likelihood, the, the cases are still on the lower end. And you pull in the, in the more recent data that we have. have. Um, but I think, think this, this is just something that I think is, is good for us to reference uh, it's out there. But, um, most importantly, importantly, what I want to do today is really, really talk about this one article that came out, came out, came out in the science on the 17th bit yesterday, yesterday. Um, but it, it, it did into SARS-CoV-2 T cell immune immunity. And, uh, they talk about the, about the specificity, the, the function, the durability and the role of the T, T cells. Now this, this really, at the, this time is perfect. It coincides with the third, third trial that we're seeing out of the, the Oxford study, the Oxford AstraZeneca AstraZeneca um, vaccine trial, trial, where we're see, seeing that particular vaccine is producing antibodies. Importantly, it's producing these T cell, the T cell cell immunity. And the T cells become really critical in our vir viral Im immunology um, as in that the T cell cells are honestly the, the most important aspect of, of our prolonged immunity. So, so we've got herd immune immunity. It's not always about the antibodies. In fact, T cells are bigger. Um, they're more dominant. They're more um, robust in their capacity. And the multitude of T, of T cells, you have your, your fire cells, you have your, have your helper cells, um, you have your memory cells, which, which is really critical. The T cells not the antibodies, but the T cells can get turned on to fight a pathogen. It can turn on an, an, a virus. And so those cells are going to be critical to, to age. They are, they're in their circular, their circulations in the blood. So when we can analyze these, we can, we can tell people's T, T cell activity. Um, but they're, the complexity of, of T cells is, is much greater than antibodies. And in fact, in some, some cases, T cells, trigger the different types of cell cell will trigger more antibodies and, and then in turn bodies trigger more T cells. So, so that kind of, if you call it an, an anti-sandwich, <laughs> it's the cell that's most important. And that's what I want to dig in, dig into today. So this, this particular study um, digs into trying, trying to understand and analyze T cells capacity for um, improving our immune immunity and also for for protecting the body. This specific, specifically is to um, to to understand if there's maybe additional scre screening. Like we do an antibody testing now, but can we do T cell cell immunity and standard standardized test methods? So that's more 
what this, what this was aimed at. But this actually shows you to you. Give you a little. Actually, actually, I'll hold info. Okay, so this shows you in a diagram. Okay, so this is the way the body is is working. So let's just say that this happens to be your COVID SID. So you've got got different form of T C cells that get get engaged and start to get invaded, and you see killing. There's uh, uh, filling infected cells, cells that occur cell apoptosis. So these cells are cells are being from the, the, the T cell. The other day I mentioned our immune, immune system army of uh, different uh, um, immune related cells. And some are ninjas or like this, you know, the special forces, you know, special ops. And others are going to be infantry and others are going to be, you know, doing different, different work. These cells, they actually look, look at you know, you know, particular, this particular cell is an infected cell and it showcases, they analyze and under microscope how our cells respond and they start to see the T cells in their way of attacking pathogen or the virus and how they process the cell to kill. So some are going to be ninjas and it's a, a you know, an assassin attempt. Others are going to make immunity so that, so that they know when that cell happens again, it's there and then they're responding faster. So there's a certain degree antiviral response that the, the, the cells add to our, our body response to COVID. The, the other thing that then gets triggered are our B cells. So B cells oh, yeah. are part of the, the lymphoid um, response, also part of, of our white blood counts. So I know a lot of you have had labs Oft, often find, find that you have you have your white cell counts or else are elevated and like okay something's going on that's an immune, re immune response and so we can tend to tell that certain things are happening within your in your body i.e these T T cells are engaged and so there's some pathogens some some virus some something that's not right with with the body and that's why it's why we have elevation um, but it's very, very interesting these cell cells they pick up v v uh, viral related debris. So the T, the T cells will actually scan the DNA or RNA so that they, they can recognize it again. Again, and this is what's most critical is that um, they can identify um, also the, the your T cell response is in terms of your 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 body response to COVID. So, so for instance, if folks have immunity or have, have mild cases, they've got active T cells. Their T cells have already done what they need to do, and they've um, articulated enough of the immune response that, that you have a mild case. Then we see certain changes in terms of uh, the response is so it's, it's a weaker response, and that is a more moderate or, or severe case of COVID. So your immune system. Over, overall, we need to get it, get it attacked. We, we need it to be working and regulated properly. For you dealing with dealing with autoimmunity, you might you might have a slow to respond and a non-responsive immune response to COVID. It also can explain why some of the autoimmunities are more on that on that of, of folks to watch, watch out for with COVID in terms of your own zero severity. So I'm going to um, really highlight, highlight that they find, they, they, they actually do a whole bunch of T cell responses. So they, they, they test, this test itself, this is, this is the, the response. And they start testing each, each person for these, these different reactions. So there's, I mean, I mean really specific, like, like interferon, they see different mar markers. You know, you know, CD8, CD38 positive, TIM, DAS3 positive. Those are all different uh, sequences of T cell, cell or cell sub subset that they're analyzing for. And then there's a link between the response and the cytokine storm. They actually have listed the cytokine storm and the, and the response. That's what that threshold is, is for fo folks in terms of if, if they're going into a hospital. Um, they, they also know, notice the different changes in the impact of, of the respiratory distress. They look at the bronchial um, 
the bronchial invasion of COVID um, and, and then intracellular cytokine storm. So there's, there's D-dimers that they're running, running in there um, related to, to identify that, that T response. I thought this was really, really, really fascinating. What they've identified is that, that you need your T, your T cells activated and stronger and more response cells are uh, that you can actually engage your immune system in a way that will, that will be more supportive for, for you recovering, you know, dealing with rec recovering from staying clear of COVID because that's one of the things, things that seeing patients who have, have had COVID, they're, they're, they're getting again. And, and I'm seeing more of that in the survivor core posts, but, but I want to, I want to highlight for you, um, a few things I've highlighted. So, so today's video really, really is about this, about this debt, but also most importantly, really what you do with about, about it. So there's food, you, food you can eat. There are supplements you can take. I'm going to go over there, those. And most importantly, there's activities you can do. The most effective, powerful activity you can do. And I, I want to start with that because this is, this is no one. I've talked about, about thymus tapping. The thymus is gland itself. And I'll show you. It's, it's right here. So right here, I have my, have my little body chart. That, that thymus gland sits right here. So, so really in between your, your chest, like right, right at the lower end of, end of your breastbone. Your thymus gland is where T cells cell mature before they, they enter the blood and the lymphatic system. So your, your, your blood, blood uh, value, value of T cells um, can be greatly enhanced by invigorating thymus glands. So the thymus tapping, I, I have a video on that. Actually, I actually have two videos on it. I've done one individually for YouTube, edited, and then I did one also on our, our live show. And I, I hide, all you do is tap for 20, 20 seconds, and you literally, it's hard. I don't know if you guys can hear it in my microphone, but, oh, but you tap, 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 and, and you, you're going to feel a vibration. It's this weird feeling. That is waking up your T cells. So that's number one, wake up T cells. Second thing that you want to do is you want to integrate your lymph system. Your lymph system transports them. So they go through blood and, and lymph. So you want to do th things, dry skin brushing. If you have any fluid swelling, edema, or lymph, or lymph edema, watch my playlist. I have almost 50 videos on, on being your lymphatic. But you can take, you can do dry skin, body brushing, sweating is powerful at moving your lymph, Olympics. exercising is pow powerful, taking a homeopathic called lymph stim is a big, big one from of you who have watched my content and uh, lymphatics that will move your lymphatics without you doing anything. The, the other most important thing that you want to do is, is take a thyroid, or not thyroid, a thymolandular. Thy so if your th thymus gland was radiated, or if, or if, you, if you're chron chronically uh, weak in terms of uh, immune response, so you have autoimmunity, some autoimmunity, you're frequently sick, sick or cold, you have recurrent infections, recurrent cellulitis, recurrent, uh, you, you know, cold sores, sores, anchor sores, infections, very easily, inter internal infections, external, external infections, skin infections. Um, um, you always get sick. You're always a family member who gets the cold or, cold or the flu. It is time that you invest in su supporting your thymus gland. And thymus glandular, I have that down below. That, that is what you want. It allows your thymus gland to get Invigorated, it enhances the circulation, it, it wakes it up as well. And then you're going to see a great, greater um, maturity, a great, greater rotation of these powerful T, T cells. And it re really is very, very powerful at doing that. The thymus tap, moving your lymphatics, a thymus glandular are critical. I, I want to get into some food foods that are helpful um, because. We want to do is we want on all angles to really support our T cells now more than ever. For then uh, those of us who have no underlying health conditions or or, or um, autoimmunity, it's very potent for you as well. Any type of um, immune response, especially to a COVID, we need to need to equip and get all of our fight fight cells. It's waking up army. We need to get get them in. Order. We need to get them um, engaged. We need to get them ready and and on alert. And so your T cells, what the research is showing, they may protect us more than the antibodies 
um, and they're more potent in terms of the longer terms. So T cells, while the body's fizzle, T cell T cells last longer, and that mem memory of those T cells and, and then the killer cells, those, those all play a role in, in, in promo also promoting the antibody body response. So the higher the T cell, you know, the longer time frame, frame you have, the greater greater unity of, of those units you have. Also, then, then we're going to see longer uh, antibody response, which it play, plays into the role why pe people are getting sick again that have already already susceptible to it. They are already all, all susceptible. They didn't have a good, healthy T cell immune response. They didn't have their thymus creating mature T, T cells. They had you know, underlying health conditions had them cr chronically and like revol revolving and never got the system age. And then it, it's this relative getting sick. And one of the things that we've got to, got to do is we've got to eat right. We need to exercise size and do these for self, self care. And then we needed to take the proper supplement supplementation. Food, green tea. There's a lot, a lot of research green tea that it will improve and, and enhance T cell activity as well as enhance the uh, T C cell releasing from the thymus. The papaya. Um, if you do, you, um, if you eat papaya, um, it, it's obviously something that, something that some, some people grow depending on when, where you live. But papaya on a daily basis is a very powerful fruit at enhancing your T, T cell acting. Oysters, if you like, like oysters, those are really, really great, clearly because they, they have high con content of selenium and zinc. Those are minerals that are very high and enriched in support, support T cells. Beans and nuts, so legumes and any type of your nuts, sunflower seeds, your um, pumpkin seeds, your almond, walnut, cashew, pistachio, um, garlic, leafy, leafy greens, um, carrots also, also carry a high content of um, the pro properties necessary to enhance your T cell activity. As far as nutrients, some of the nutrients, the, the, the for nutrients, these are supplements you can take. Only make sure you get the, your values tested. If you are on the lower side, then we'll, we'll be predictive of, of our T cell response. Vitamin D, we need that optim optimized, A5 and higher. Zinc, acid, B6, and selenium. Selenium, a minimum of 50, 55 MCGs, 55 MCGs a day, really big, really big. Um, and then also, there's one other supplement I love, and it's called Cell Forte. I'll link to it down below. I didn't get a chance to um, before, before we I started shooting with you all today, but but that is a uh, very powerful compound. It splits into two, two and actually invigorates vigor, the killer cells. So uh, there are a multitude of T cells. Each has a different role and fun function. But the, the, those T cells are those ones that are your frontline line army. They're infantry. You need more infantry carriers to, to fight a virus of this size. And the multitude and the spread, spread is quite overwhelming. Um, so so Sarte is another good, good one. Activities that you can do, yoga, meditation, growing exercises, take feet off, putting your feet in dirt and sand. Um, I, I have folks that live in condos or complexes where, where they can't in to, you know, they can't go to a sandy area, area where they don't have dirt in their backyard, whatever. Um, you can buy, you can literally have a little dirt bin. Very similar to like, to like I said, these little um, some sentence with Gabriel, you can have a three bin for, your, for yourself that you feed in. And then literally that is a very grounding activity. Um, but definitely walking, um, running, nature, being in nature is very grounding and very, very powerful for that. You also are getting sunshine, you're getting out and about. So when, when you can stay fashion, fashion make sure you're wearing full eye, full eye protection and cover your nose and your mouth, your mouth and make sure you've got all your, your you know, sanitizing and all that stuff with you. Um, but those, those are ways to really, really minimize um, your, the, the development of COVID, COVID within your body. Um, and I, I need to, need to I, I want to say that, say that to me. So, you know, one, nothing has been proven as, as a cure for COVID. So I want to put out there, this, these statements are in a way curative. Um, but we know, we know that, you know, the, you know, the interwoven web of molar cellular, cellular um, um, immune activity within your, in your body, that is your, your defense mechanism. And there are, are proven, you know, we, we have study, study data 
on green tea and papaya and vitamin D in the roles, you know, in the role of enhancing those defense cells, your, your T cells. We know this because, because we have a lot of data on cancer, you know, there's a lot of research in the, the autoimmunity, you know, you know, colitis. So we've identified these already. They also translate into our norm, normal, every immunity and for, and for sure in, within the world of COVID. Um, but that is, this is something that I think overall, we might start to see, see um, some lab labs online that might, that might be getting the TC cell testing to the mix um, that might also in encourage um, physicians and clinicians who run your, your T cells. Um, it might be a screening tool down the road, um, but we're learning more about our, about our immune response. We didn't know all of this in March. They were speculating, started to do this data. Um, but, you know, when we're, get we're getting into you know, the viral proteome and the, the capacity for our body to re respond, we actually actually have a, a response mechanism. And, and so um, those, you know, if you want technical CDD and CD8 are the, uh, they're the effector functions. Those are, those are the, the elements that get, that get involved within the body, in the T cells. And so food, food, figure that. I miss tapping every, every day. I miss tap. You can do that in the morning, midday. Um, most importantly, invest in a thymus gland because as most of us have a very sleepy, weak, weak lazy, lazy thymus gland that you got to get up. And the, thym the thymus gland just as important, important, uh, as important and potent in your, in your immunity as your, your, your thyroid is or your re reproductive product health, metabolic health, health. Any of you are familiar with getting your thyroid steroids did? Are you doing any type of thyroid gland testing? So that's your T testing. So we don't have, have a really strong way of identifying for each and every one of you right now, now how fun functional is your thymus gland. So it becomes it's really important that you take, take your health into your own hands. You do your thymus tapping. You do your anybody can watch all my videos. I was on the now. I have great info. Um, and you, you port the thymus so that it works for you and matures your cells. It gets more T cells going. It releases them into your lymphatics to protect you. It's part of your army. Um, it's, it's it's essentially like your power, your your you know your gunpowder reserve. Um, so you know that we have certain certain barriers to um, our, our immune response on, or certain. Our immune response creates certain barrier um, activities and functions. And many of these functions can be invigorated by everyday things like food, you know, dietary changes, uh, supplementation routines, and every self-care. So, so I encourage each of you to wake up your thymus gland, encourage the TT cell activity, those fighter cells, the helper cells, and the memory T cells to get that them at their optimal levels. And that, that that's what today's video is all about. And I advice for everybody. We had about 20, 25 minutes and echo. It turned out I wasn't wearing my, wearing my so very uh, error user on my part. But I really, really want to encourage, encourage each of you to for sure thumb this tap and grab the, the thighs glandular. I've got that listed down below. I will I will post all of this data. I mean, it was, it was a lot, lot. Uh, I think I'm going to have to order more ink already, but definitely. And I want, and I want to encourage each of you, if you haven't been subscribed, please just do. Um, also I'm working on a, their, uh, uh, freebie download. I had over, over a thousand of you download my, uh, COVID <laughs> coronavirus antivirus checklist. Um, and so, so I will post the current checklist down below, adding a whole bunch of new, new stuff based on, New data and new research, research. So we know, I know a lot more about this, what we can do, do um, at least we summit and lifestyle wise to help you and your, and your families um, stay safe and to equip your PRB with the mechanisms it needs in the event it is exposed. So working on that, that, that will be out there. And, and, um, and, and so I hope this, this is helpful. Please give me a thumbs up. YouTube, I don't know what happened today. <laughs> YouTube's just, it's gone off the rails. They've, they've done a whole bunch of stuff. We have a whole bunch of ads. They're changing, changing the ads are. So by, by the way, you're going to be seeing more and more ads on some of these videos. Uh, YouTube's, I, I think, trying to inch every penny out of our videos. 
um, definitely please subscribe, follow me, and um, let's talk about today, Wednesday. So tomorrow is Thursday. I'm sure there will be more great the And uh, just have faith in your body and in your immune response and get those thymus glands engaged. All right, friends, I will see you to you toe. And thanks, YouTube. Thank you, Pat, Pat for being great. I apologize again. <laughs> Uh, I had my earrings and so I had my mic on. I took it off and I forgot to put it back on. on. So, um, but hopefully the echo, the echo on and I will see you, you tomorrow on my Instagram. We've got a lot of really good content that creating and very, very soon I will be posting a lot more um, video, uh, article content to my blog. So I'll keep you all aware of that. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes here. As I, as I try to keep all of you informed as, as I can. So, so thanks. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Bye everybody. Be well, well, safe and get